Hey guys, Sister Bear, and this is Out to Be Skies. I myself am having a wonderful day. Hope you guys all are as well. Let's go ahead and move forward and push on with the pack here. So, in between episodes, gone ahead and worked on our reactor a little bit. So, this one here went ahead and, uh, went ahead and made it, I think it was six levels taller. It's actually 13 tall now, right? So, I just kind of dug down, used a whole bunch more of the casing. Didn't use any more of the reactor glass. I just used straight casing down here because it doesn't really matter too much. A little more expensive, but then you have this nice line here, nice window, and it just looks right. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn up our burn rate. Their burn rate now is actually 130 millibuckets a tick. So we go ahead and actually speed up our polonium production. So over here we have, um, I guess, 20, yeah, 2,200 buckets of polonium. We need 5,000 to be able to make our antimatter. I just kind of want to get through this production here and be done with it. I did add a few more of these uh, tubes here too for the, uh, the waste because the waste, I need to make sure I can store it all during the nighttime, right? So through it a nighttime cycle this thing doesn't actually run right so it needs the actual sun to be able to run you need to make sure i have enough storage to actually store all the waste that comes in during the nighttime. so i just added a few more tubes there this thing too i didn't realize this uh entangle porter it's an internal buffer is eight thousand buckets so yeah it was getting totally backed up that's why i had to go ahead and make the reactor bigger and this is backed up too right so still burning through the backlog there because i just recently operated the actual production as well so in here, I'll show you what I did for the production upgrade. Actually, I think I like tripled the production we we're doing on the fissile fuel with three machines. It's all it took, right? So in here, we were doing the sulfur dioxide, the chemical oxidizer. Added two more because this machine wasn't keeping up, right? I also added a few more riders too, just to make sure these buffers weren't getting bogged down. So I actually have three of them now just to disperse the power usage. I guess uh, the power disper uh, distribution because like I said, they weren't keeping up. But uh, added two more chemical oxidizers. So they're doing the same thing. They're all pulling in from the same crusher here. So this can keep up no problem. But uh, it's just producing way more sulfur dioxide. Then that means we get way more sulfur dioxide, which means more production. And the other place where it was getting kind of bogged down here, I guess it was right here, the chemical oxidizer over here, doing the uranium oxide, added one more of those as well. Same thing, just pushing it into the front of the infuser. And uh, that just keeps up with the production here, right? So this one isn't really needed that much. And I guess technically I could probably add a few more oxidizers because this machine isn't bogged down. Nothing else is bogged down at all. Everything's just waiting on either sulfur dioxide or the uranium oxide. So I could probably fit in like two more of those and up the production, but then I'd have to make my reactor even bigger. I think this is big enough. I just needed to make sure we get our 5,000 buckets, I guess, by the time we get to here, right? So I think that would be more quick enough. So. That is pretty cool. So that is that is everything I did. Anyway, out here I did uh, one last thing, I guess uh, over here. I did all the crafting for the initial kind of setup we're gonna do today. So the next thing we need to work on is gonna be DT fuel, which is uh, deuterium tritium. So DT equals deuterium tritium. And we need, I believe, 100 buckets of this fuel for a quest line. So in here, down there, we've got the uh, 100 buckets of liquid DT fuel. Oh, it's liquid? I guess we have to do liquid DT fuel. Either way, it doesn't matter. So we'll have to get that done. Uh, then we're gonna go ahead and use that, uh, I guess this stuff here, the deuterium and the tritium to run a fusion reactor. So we'll have a second reactor. The reason we need all that power too, if you actually look at um, antimatter, like this reactor, when we set up, I'm gonna try to get it set up for about 20 million RF tick. The main reason we need all that power is for this here, this uh, antimatter, the gas here, is gonna be done in the supercritical phase shifter, right? And we're producing the polonium right now. But we're going to need 400 million per one millibucket. So you don't have to really give it that exact amount per tick. You don't have to give it 400 million a tick. But to produce it, you need 400 million to get one millibucket. And we need 5,000 of those millibuckets. So that's a lot, right? So that's a lot of power. Basically, take this number and multiply it by 5,000. And that's what we need. So... So I think I got everything I just about need to kind of get this going here. I'm just grabbing a couple more evaporation plants because I decided to set up two more of them. We're going to be doing four of these things, so that's the thing. Uh, what else do we need here? Cobble. Let's go ahead and grab some cobble just so we have some placement blocks. I think that's effectively everything we need. So let's actually go ahead and grab this. Go ahead and uh, put this on this puppy. Then we'll jump inside our compact machine and see if we get this going, right? So the first one we're going to work on is going to be deuterium, I think. We're going to do the deuterium first, so go ahead and get that done. So go ahead and do this. And in here we have this. They have DT fuel, right? Deuterium and tritium. Deuterium is going to be done with pumps, right? So it has to be made in the electrolytic separator. 
and it's done with heavy water. You get heavy water from pumps, so it has the electric pump that's from mechanism, right? And then you give it a filter upgrade, which I've already done with uh, 13 of them. They're actually already in good to go. Need to drop this stuff off, though. Good to drop you off. Grab ourselves our pumps. We also need the cables, so we'll need them. We'll need a point. And I guess we'll need the electrolytic separator. And that should be our initial setup here, I think, right? I guess we'll need this cobblestone, too. So, anyway, these things are a little weird, too, to, like, rotate. They rotate around a little funny. But basically what these do is pull, I guess, the actual heavy water that we're going to, be going to uh, require to make the deuterium straight from water sources, right? And they have to have the filter upgrade. Otherwise, it just pulls water, right? So it has to have this upgraded here, which I've already gone ahead and done. I'm going to set these to, uh, I guess I want the configurator, not that. I want to set that to rotate here. So let's go to uh, rotate. And see if we get these turned around. Oh, actually, if you shift and right-click on them, they turn directly where you want to. I think I used to do this the hard way because I remember fighting with these before. But anyway, that worked just fine. So that is really nice. Let's go ahead and uh, lay down our cobblestone here. Then we'll have to get to, uh, to some uh, water sources as well because we have to have water sources underneath every one of these. So let's go ahead and grab that. Make sure that's in bucket mode and just do our water, right? There you go. Pretty simple, love these tanks. Makes your life so much easier. Just be able to put down the water as you please. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves the universal cables here. These are just the power pipes, of course, from Mechanism. They move lots of power. We're using it in our, I guess our flower setup. Not even flower, what is it them? Uh, what is those? The Elven Manifields. That's what, what they were using those uh, on, I guess. Let's go ahead and grab that there. Give this power pretty much anywhere, right there. And these should already be producing heavy water. So there you go. It just pulls it in, just produces it, and we're good in that regards, right? So we already have our production. Let's go ahead and grab our, uh, we actually already have that. Let's go ahead and grab you. Find the spot here. Might as well have it in the middle, right? So we'll pop it right, that, that seems wrong, actually. I want that on top. Oh, we need to pull the uh, liquid out, too. That, that would help as well, because it's going to come out of the top of these things. So what we use here probably is just pipes. I think uh, I need to get through some more pipes here. I only have eight. Let's do that. These don't need to be fast. I'm not too worried about that. And we'll just use the ultimate upgrades here because uh, I figured it'd just be the quickest way to get this set up here. So let's do uh, this here. We won't be producing it too fast anyway, but I'm just going to use the very fast upgrades because well, I'm rich and I have them on AutoCraft and I don't care. Anyway, <laughs> let's just set these all to extract. There you go. Get all 13 done. These 13 are probably going to be overkill as well, but I'm just going to do overkill because, well, one, I don't ever want to mess with deuterium again, and two, this compact machine is 13 wide. So anyway, that's a thing as well. There you go. They should be all done. Now we can go ahead and put down the, the electrolytic, right? So we'll go ahead and uh, pop it right there. That's going to start producing. It's getting powered already. This thing is already all upgraded, but we already have our heavy water, our deuterium, and our oxygen. And that's everything we need. We want to void off the uh, excess oxygen because we don't need that. And then I guess we'll end up putting that through a quantum tanker porter is all we'll do, right? So I'll just have it kind of like here. Grab ourselves a tube. Go ahead and do that from the front. And I guess we'll have to configure the machine to export out the front too. So we'll just go into here. Go to gases. If we can hunt down gases there and set the extract. There you go, it's actually going in there, which point uh, we want to configure this one here. This is gonna be how we move this stuff around too. We're just gonna use the integral porters. Guess we'll have to set a dude channel too. So we'll just call this one Doot. There you go, that would be great. Chuck that off and then that should already be full actually. And there you go, we are actually producing our deuterium, which is fantastic. I guess it's gonna be buffered with power too. I don't think I really need the power buffer, but it's there either way. So that is good, that is good, that handles that. So one already taken care of. So the next thing we're doing here is actually set up some of these here. These are solar evaporation plants. We're gonna set up three of them. Then we're gonna have a fourth one sit right here. This is gonna to be to produce tritium. So to get tritium, this is kind of the whole process here, right? So you have to have a solar neutron activator getting lithium. And then with the lithium, you get the tritium, right? So that's how you do that. But you get that from the liquid lithium, right? So once you have liquid lithium, the way you get that is uh, brine, and then it goes through the thermal evaporation, which is powered by heat. Then you get your liquid lithium. To get the actual brine, though, it's actually done in a, uh, another thermal evaporation, and it's water to brine. And each one is 10 millibuckets to one millibucket. I think it's 10 millibuckets to one millibucket here. So kind of you reduce the amount you have as you go as well, right? 
So that's why we're setting up three of these, basically. So we're going to have a bunch of ports on these as well. So they have to be 4x4 four four on the bottom. So that's kind of like the preset. Then up to 18 tall, I believe. Uh, you can also po power them with, um, I guess, just like sun. Or you could use uh, solar power as well. There's like solar from the mod that you can set up. And uh, we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be using resi resistive heaters. That's kind of my plan here. But anyway, these are going to be water ports, I believe. So do that, that, and that. So all three of those will get water. Then we'll have the other ports that have to do heat. Maybe we'll do those ones higher. It doesn't really matter. But let's get these kind of multi-blocked here first, I guess. And then we'll have to have extraction ports as well. But I'm trying to fit them into a tight space here. So I'm going to do them a little jankly. But not uh, completely jank anyway. <laughs> so we'll see what we get done, basically what I'm trying to say. So let's do that. Don't think they'll actually multi-block until the three tall as well. So that should multi-block there. There you go. And then this one's multi-blocked, hopefully, as well. So kind of get that one done. And then this will be the last one. Then we can actually start uh, working on the water, right? I'll build them up to the max height as we kind of progress. And I decide where I'm going to put my ports to. Or maybe I should just do this, actually. i just go ahead and wand them up at this point, I guess. So we'll just bring them up to the top here. Hopefully, bring them all up and make them quite large. I think you have to, uh, the amount of heat you got to make sure they have too. I think it's 300,000 Kelvin, but uh, that'll become more apparent when we set up our resistive heaters here. So anyway, let's uh, do that. So that's our multi-block, so that will work there. So we want to get water in air one of these. Notice it has a temperature here. The target goal is 300K, I believe, for every recipe that is done in these, which is not very much, is it? And no, I guess it only has two, but both of them are uh, 300,000. The production rate will be de will determine the uh, how much they produce too as well, right? So I got my sink here. So that, then I have a fluid importer in this here. That should be everything we need in that regards. And we'll just kind of do the water right here, I think. Let's go ahead and grab you. Oh, I need some more uh, logic cable too. So let's actually grab some logics. Get some of this cable in. There you go. Let's do like a stack. I don't have enough uh, of this. Actually, I do. I have these, don't I? I put a whole bunch of blocks in there, not many of the crystals. Either way, let's go ahead and grab them. Got a good amount of those. Then we'll just kind of bring these across here. Then we'll need interfaces in different spots here, right? So we'll need interface here, here, and here. That looks good. And grab ourselves our cable. Bring it across. So something like this here. And we just do very fast extraction on this. That's why I'm using these... Uh, these actual, uh, the integrated dynamic ones too. So we'll be able to uh, do all three of them, no problem. So in this one here, we should be able to just throw a import all fluids, run over to the fluid transfer rate, and just up that ton, right? Doesn't really matter. Shouldn't have to be insanely fast. So I'm just gonna go with that there. But go inside this, every one of these should be full of water now, right? Oh yeah, I have to look at the controllers to be able to access these ones. So there you go, we've got the water part done, right? Next would be heat, right? So we have a resist of heaters and that I already have ports on me. So it doesn't really matter where I do this. I'll do one here and one here. Should be able to do these two together. So I'll just do that. Then over here, I guess I could do the same thing here. I'll just double pump on this one. Doesn't matter if it gets extra heat, but we'll have a port here and here. And that is fantastic. And then we just go ahead and grab our resist of heaters and kind of put them down in between them. They take power. So I'll have to deal with that as well. You're not going the right way, though. Can I rotate you easy? Because that would be nice. Rotate. Are you going to rotate? Some of these machines don't like rotating. There we go. Got it rotated. And then we want this one here. And then we'll want to probably rotate that one as well. Maybe? Nope. You going to rotate? <laughs> it does not want to rotate at all. There we go. That's fantastic. Okay. So we'll need a point. We'll actually need two of them. So let's actually go ahead and grab another point here. Go ahead and do that. I did not know you get bees in compact machines. I did, this is this is new to me. You need you need to go away, buddy. Anyway, that is fine there. Probably go ahead and turn them off soon, too. I think we actually have all the runes for our quest line now, so we don't actually need them. Anyway, go ahead and do that. Do that as well. Then inside these, they kind of have a temperature here, but you can set how much power they use to actually produce heat. Probably going to set them both to... We'll start with 2,500 to see if that's enough if they actually get up the temperature here. I don't want to go insane. It kind of builds up over time, too. So, yeah, we'll kind of see here. Yeah, the temperature's already good enough. So that one's good. It's producing. This one's producing. And I think this one would be producing as well. There you go. And that temp will just kind of keep going up there. I don't know if the temperature actually raises the production, but we can test that out for sure. 
So now that we have these ones done, right? Next thing we need to do is uh, set up another one. So I'll go ahead and get that one done. And then we'll kind of come back and uh, get this all wired up and uh, start producing the actual lithium here. There you go, we got our fourth one set up. That is good. I went ahead and moved the resistive heater that I had over here and put it between these two because it makes more sense because I can power these two together, right? So otherwise I need a third resistive heater for no apparent reason. There is cabling from those things as well, but the cabling kind of loses heat as it goes, right? So there's like thermal, uh, thermal dynamic conductors, I think they're called, but they lose heat as they move heat, right? So it's better off just powering it directly from the resistive heater here. So that's good there. The temperature's going up. That's fantastic. Uh, did I actually up the heat on that? I did too. So that is good. And these ones, are they actually producing? Now, I thought it said 2.3K. I was wondering why the heat was so low, but that looks good there. And then I guess we'll have to add a few more ports here anyway. So we'll have, I guess, a port here and a port here, hopefully. Do that. This would be for pulling out the brine now. So we need to pull out the brine and then put it into, I guess, uh, the other puppy, right? To uh, actually make the lithium, right? So let's do that. Then we'll have a port here as well. I'm trying to do this as uh, compact as we can. And we'll just use the, I guess, the fluid importer on this one. I guess the exporter, right? Because that'll pull into the machine as opposed to push from the source, right? Then we only need the one of them, right? So that's why I'm using the different ones, right? The importers and the exporters, depending on what I'm doing. Cause that way I only need one there. And this way I only need one here. <laughs> so that's the thing. Go ahead and uh, grab some logic cable. And we'll need logic cable, hopefully. Maybe, let's go ahead and do that. And bring you across. That looks good. And then I guess all we need is another variable card and then we're good to go, right? So let's go ahead and uh, hook this up and uh, see if it's working. And it should be anyway. Oh, I should actually get the variable card in there, right? It's to you. Go to uh, fluid transfer rate. Shouldn't matter too much again, like I said, but just uh, kind of bring that across. Fantastic. And that should be full of lithium now. There you go, we're actually getting a lithium. The brine's coming in. Notice that the brine is only gonna come in so fast. I knew it was gonna kind of only go to wave, right? So it looks like each one of these is producing 780 millibuckets per operation. It says tick, don't believe it. it it's never worked like that, right? You never get that kind of production out of it. I don't know why it says per tick. It's more per operation. So I guess that's the thing, right? And then that gets converted anyway, right? As it kind of goes. So anyway, we're backed up on the lithium, which is good. And it's getting the brine, which is what we want to see here. Then we want to take that, I guess, and run that probably directly through a rotary. This needs to be turned from the liquid, right? Over to the gas. So that's what we're doing now. Let's go ahead and grab you. We get ourselves another point here, which still looks super jank, but anyway. Go ahead and uh, pop you down. Let's do some power in that. I think I got this upgraded too, right? So we're good. Here, we could probably just use regular pipes, right? So let's just grab some regular pipes. Actually, we can't use pipes. We need, um, we can use the other pipes. Let's go ahead and hunt down our green ones, right? Our gas pipes. No, these are liquids. I can use pipes. I get so confused working with this stuff sometimes. Um, oh, I should move that over one more too. We'll need a port right here, actually. So let's go ahead and grab that. It doesn't matter if you break them when they're full of liquids either or gases. It doesn't actually lose anything. So don't have to worry about it in that regards. So that is good. We'll go rotary one more time. Then hopefully a point one more time. That is good. Then I'll probably go straight into an entangle port, I guess. Because we have to take it to the outside world where we can actually run it through a solar neutron activator, right? Yeah, it needs daylight. So that is good there. Oh, I'm doing the wrong thing again. Let's go ahead and grab you. We need fluids. Then we just go ahead and set the extract. Might as well make it fast, because why not? Then we'll have to configure the top of this machine. So let's actually set it to, I guess, fluids, right? Fluids. And we'll do a, wait, input. That looks good. Then we'll need this in decon mode. And there you go. It's actually straight up just producing right away. So there you go. We actually have our actual lithium. At which point, like I said, we'll just put it straight into a quantum tank quarter because there's no reason to keep it in here. <laughs> so let's go sides, gases. And that's how to be a output auto eject. Make sure it's on. And then we'll have to set a channel here. Uh, the channel, I guess we'll just do, what is this one going to be? We'll call it lith, I guess. There you go, because that's what it is, lithium. And it should be in there. There you go, we have our production. So it's producing. It's going at a very good rate, actually. We'll be able to uh, hopefully run the fusion reactor at max speed. So I think for max speed of the fusion reactor, so there's two ways of doing the fusion reactor. You can either feed it straight DT fuel. And I think it takes like a bucket of tick. That's not my goal. That produces over hundred million. 
but you need a lot of production for that. The other way is with the deuterium and tritium, and then it'll mix inside the reactor, and it gives you control over the burn rate, right? And uh, I think the max burn rate is 96 millibuckets, so I think you need about 50 millibuckets of each, and I think we have that production. We should be fine either way. So yeah, we're looking good here. We're actually looking good. We already have 3,000 buckets of deuterium, and that's going to go up pretty quickly as well. This is probably going to stay faster than that, but either way, this is the hard one to kind of mass produce anyway because it takes so much space. But I think we are good. So the next thing we need to do, I guess, is run this lithium through some solar neutron activators. I'm not sure how many we're going to need, but I'm going to go ahead and make maybe two more. We'll go with three because we'll have a nighttime production as well. So we'll kind of build up over the night. and We'll have to burn through all that during the day to kind of keep up with our fusion reactor. So let's go ahead and uh, get this part done. So I figured we'll go ahead and uh, produce the tritium right here, right on our deck. Why not? Right outside our house. Doesn't matter where these ones go at all. So I might as well have them nearby. Go ahead and uh, break that there. Down here, we'll probably have a quantum potato porter too. So this one right here, let's go ahead and uh, grab that. Is that one on lift? No, I thought I already set this to lift. Doesn't matter. There you go, that's lithium. And then we'll pull that into the bottom of these machines here uh, quite easily. So let's go ahead and uh, hunt down this down here. I think we need to configure the sides in this too. So we want uh, outputs on all these gas. Let's just do that. Then we'll just go ahead and move the gases up into the solar neutrons. And they should just take the stuff automatically in the bottom. I guess we'll find out here in a second, but I'm pretty sure they just automatically uh, accept it from the bottom. Uh, right there. There you go. And are these working? We'll see. There you go. We're actually getting our tritium. So we got our production now. Now, before we go ahead and actually start just bulk storing tritium, which is my plan here, we actually have to make DT fuel, right? So we need the fuel for the quest here. Plus, we need a little bit of it kind of on the side as well to be able to uh, start the reactor. So you need one bucket to actually turn the reactor on. So we'll do a little temporary setup here. Well, let's do that. Go ahead and pump you into here. We need a chemical infuser. Then the other one here, we just go ahead and grab our deuterium, right? So go ahead here and go into dut, right? Go ahead and set that one. And we'll go ahead and probably have to set the output on that side as well. But we'll do that in a second. Let's see here, output is in one gas. There you go. Choose the right side, please. Output, there you go. So that's good there. We're actually making a little bit of a DT fuel. If we give power, we actually make a lot more. <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, grab you. Go ahead and uh, power this puppy. And that should start making our DT fuel. So it's already backed up there. It should make this pretty quickly too. Uh, I want one of the chem tanks there, right? But I want one that only holds like 100 and something. That's a thousand, that's 64. Why is that so many? Why don't I don't want a thousand buckets? I really just want two of these basics, I guess. Well, this one holds 256. We'll go with 256. That way we don't have to worry about it too much. It's just we don't need a lot of the stuff, so there's no reason to uh, actually store a whole bunch of it. So let's go ahead and do this here. Once this has 100, I guess we have enough to do our quest. Once we have like 120, we have enough for our reactor, right? We only need one bucket to actually turn the reactor on. But if it ever turns off for any reason, you need to turn it back on. You need another bucket of DT fuel. In fact, that's probably enough right there. So that's good. We'll just kind of leave that. So let's go ahead and submit that, I suppose. So this here. Oh, it needs to be liquid, too. I forgot about that. We need a rotary. Totally forgot we need a rotary here. Let's go ahead and grab a rotary. Uh, rotary. One of these here. Yeah, we need one of these puppies. I completely forgot. Thankfully, we just auto-craft everything. Wait a couple seconds, and we should have everything. That is good there. Then I guess what we'll do is... We'll have to do this. We'll have to pipe from there. So let's go gas from here to here. So I'm just about done submitting all of the liquid DT fuel. So it's almost done here. I just had the wrong side of the tank here with the gases on the output. I didn't have the correct thing set up, but that should handle that. And once it's done, I'm going to immediately break that because I want to keep those other 42 buckets of DT fuel. But that finishes off that quest, right? So if we go down here now, we're actually into our first quest of that quest line. It's all finished up. It is uh, good to go. And uh, we're good to get into our fusion reactor. Now, to get into the fusion reactor, um, it's going to be a little bit of work. I think we need the polonium pellets somewhere. Where is it? Right here. We need to make the pellets. So I'll need a pressurized reaction chamber, and I need to make some more of the fluoride dust. But I don't want to make much of this stuff because, well, I want to save the polonium for our actual, like, endgame quest line. So I'm going to try to min-max this and not be wasteful. But, uh, yeah, I need to make some of these pellets here. So apparently I forgot to chunk load this, but this is all chunk loaded and everything is running just perfectly. So that is good. 
And here we have the uh, lithium being built up. I think it's nighttime right now, so it's not actually processing, but it is uh, pretty much good to go. So this is running. I also went ahead and set up a quantum integral porter. So this is uh, just uh, storing all the tritium. So this will be able to store up to 8,000 buckets of it. So that works out quite well. It's just stacked on top of the other one down there, right? So that works out just fine. Everything's good in that regards. And then I guess over here as well, I went ahead and made some pol polonium, right? So I made the actual pellets here. So I have uh, 64 of them. I'm going to try to just use a stack and no more because I want to save all the polonium we have. But one thing I noticed when I was making this was I could do this, actually. I could actually, like, connect them, right? So I could do that. And it puts it into the machine that I had to put in the fluoride dust to actually make the pellets, right? So the same way you make the plutonium. And then when I disconnect it, like, I was worried about how much was still in there. I could actually just go ahead and pull it out. It actually extracts it straight from the machine. So I didn't know you could extract basically from these slots at all on the machines, but apparently you can. So really cool, really awesome. It makes it so you could actually clear out the buffer. So it works out very well because that just puts it into the uh, the polonium system, which is uh, fantastic all around. But now that we have this, we'll end up having to do a whole bunch of new stuff, right? So we have to get to do all the fusion materials, right? So we have like the fusion reactor controller. So that's not too bad. These casings here are going to be all the ones that actually take the pellets here. Then we're going to need some of these fusion reactor ports. And then I don't think we need a logic adapter at all. And what's the other thing we're going to need here? Oh, yeah, reactor glass, but I think we already have this. You can actually use this stuff. It's way cheaper. I think you can use 30 of these. Well, 30 minus the ports. So about 25 of these. It makes actually makes making the reactor way cheaper if you use this, right? Because it doesn't actually take any of the polonium. So that's why I'm trying to go with only a stack. I think I might have actually made too much, but either way, we are good. And if I need some more, I have it. So yeah, that is uh, pretty much everything on route to the fusion reactor. But I think, I think I may come back tomorrow and set that up, right? So we'll go ahead and uh, end this one here. We'll come back in the next episode, actually set up the fusion reactor, set up our new power source, then move along with quest line, and then we'll be all set up for end game, right? We're pretty much reaching the point where we're just going to be doing step by step by step, getting us to end game and finishing off this pack. And uh, yeah, I am already looking for new packs. I already have two possibilities. So we'll kind of see how it goes here. But as always, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. So as always, guys like this video, please hit that like button. Really liked it. Hit that subscribe button. It is always appreciated. Well, you guys all have a good one. See you guys in the next video. Later.